Good evening. Welcome to the Lewiston City Council meeting for December 8th, 2014. We'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. Uh, first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, next order of business is citizen comments. This is an opportunity for <coughs> citizens to address the council on agenda items or other items they wish to bring to the attention of the council. <coughs> citizens are encouraged to discuss operational issues in advance with the city manager. In consideration of others wishing to speak, please limit your remarks to three minutes. Do we have any citizen comments this evening? Name and address for the record, please. Gary Bush, 912 18th Avenue. And I come before you because on the active agenda you have something about Modi Park. And uh, this is our backyard. And a little bit of history might be an opportune time to uh, give you that history at this point. In 1980, Ruth and Don Modi Modi donated seven acres of, of land to the city, and that's in your packets and also this map that's on, on the overhead. That was a drainage area that McCann had cows on. Uh, the financing to develop that park was not available as the federal money dried up, and it was held in trust by the state of Idaho. And in 1992, uh, Concerned citizens, the Lewis and Park and Rec Commission, and the Lewis and, Lewis and Parks and Rec Department, and the Urban Forestry Commission, with city council approval, uh, had a nonprofit group and allowed them to develop the park's concept with the city. And that became Modi Park Conservancy. And in 1996, Modi Park Conservancy was formed. And at that time, in 1996, Modi Park Conservancy and the city signed a cooperative development agreement. And in that was a quote that said, an open space in the center of the city which citizens of all ages can enjoy and learn from. That was the concept. That was the plan. That was the agreement. It wasn't a green grass park for ball fields but a nature conservancy, a natural 16 acres, an oasis in the middle of an urban setting. Now that was uh, the second nature conservancy in the state of Idaho. First one was along the Boise River in Boise. Well, I came up to show you what concerned citizens have done for, since 1996, hand watered year after year of hand watering because there was no water. We were taking water from Annabelle Osborne's land, filling up buckets and taking to those plantings that were donated and planted by private citizens. That was not city money, that was private citizens' money. Now, uh, the, dug the holes for the plants, they purchased them out of their own pocket, and we had scout groups, we had church groups, we had LCSC athletic teams, private citizens all donated countless hours and effort. And for those efforts, individuals have won awards for the 25 years of wor hard work and sweat and kudos go to Phil Shin for being the guiding light for 25 years. Uh, a little bit of history so folks know, and you know, um, some of you have not been in the valley long enough to remember these put in place in 1909. That was a little joke. Um, many of us are not, but that was uh, the entrance to the Lewiston Sweetwater Irrigation Company and their land development. 
And so that was the road on the way to model farms, which became the Lewiston Orchards. Those are still existing in the Modi Park area, one on 8th Street and one on 10th Street. Also, in 1935, Modi Park contains the building that was the first bonded and licensed winery in the state of Idaho after the Depression. And that building is a historic building, and it exists on what is going to be part of city land. Well, we also have a lot of concerned citizens that have been putting trees up every year for Arbor Day, and we are on our 18th tree in a tree ring. The reason I came up here is because the original concept and the original plan is for Modi Park to become a place and has been a place where urban kids can go and see how fruits and vegetables are grown, where butterflies gather, wildlife abounds. Grapes have been harvested since the 1930s volunteer time to make their community better and a place to walk your dog in solitude and hear the screech of hawks circling overhead. It is not a place where you can play any kind of games, never has been, never will be. And that is many, many of our neighbors and ourselves, our backyard. And uh, that 16 acres has become uh, quite popular. And I know that under your leadership and Parks and Rec and all that love Modi Park, we'll see the continuation of that same plan and concept. I thank you for your time, Mr. Mayor and City Council members. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gary. And my name is Barbara Bush, 912 18th Avenue. And I wanted to um, just talk to you briefly and, and cover a few things that Gary didn't talk about. Um, one of them is Phil Shin. I just want to give special recognition publicly to Phil for all the work that he's done over the last 25 to 28 years. He had the vision to see what was possible in our city and provide this open space for folks. I, I really have deep regret that he wasn't able to be at this meeting tonight um, because he's got so much more information than, than Gary and I do. But when Gary and I were first married and first lived in the house on 18th Avenue, the land that uh, is the subject of our discussion tonight was pretty bare. There was nothing there except Annabelle's fruit trees and her berries and her vegetable gardens. But the rest of it was basically just a feedlot and there was lots of dilapidated buildings and junk. And after the Conservancy got a hold of it and many volunteers, we really, really were able to change the face of that. For those of you that haven't visited Modi Park, um, and I know, Jed, you have, and RJ, I remember you up there picking grapes a couple of times, please feel free to call Gary and I. We'd love to give you a tour, get together, and come up with some dates, and we'll walk you through the park. Hopefully, Phil will be available and we can show you what there is to see. You'll be amazed. It really is a treasure for our city. We talked about Annabelle Osborne a little bit. She was a special friend of mine because she was a gardener. Um, but Annabelle, when she bequeathed her two acres to the city for this park, she was very specific about what she wanted it to be used for. She wanted it to be used for an interpretive center so that 
folks could come and become educated about nature and about growing things. She herself was an educator, and the Conservancy folks have tried to carry out her wishes. Um, Jennifer Junior High School has a plot in our community garden that's also located there. And from time to time, other agencies, such as University of Idaho Extension Office, have come and done special demonstrations um, and given some outdoor classes. So in closing, I would really like to encourage the council and the city staff to honor Annabelle's wishes and make sure that her land is used for what she wanted it to be used for. It's a wonderful opportunity for us to, to give to our neighbors the opportunity to observe nature and just to be quiet with themselves and their families. Gary said that there's no games played there. Well, there's plenty of games played there. They're just not organized sports. There's lots of hide and seek that goes on with families and egg hunting when it's Easter all kinds of outdoor activities that um, are pretty special to that park. I'd like to thank Tim and his crew for the work they've been doing on Annabelle's land lately. It's really been making a difference. And I'd like to encourage the city staff to continue in that vein. <laughs> we need a roof really badly on that winery building before it is dilapidated. It's a great historic building. And of course, we all know that the wine industry has had quite a resurgence in our valley. We'd like to be able to show that to folks, to visitors and citizens, um, as the first winery after prohibition in Idaho. We're really proud of that, and we need to preserve it. And also, we really need some permanent barriers to keep people from driving in the park. I have become the park Nazi. I'm very happy to do that, but I think it would be nice to have some barriers that prohibited folks from driving on the grass and things like that. Thank you very much for your time, and I look forward to talking to you again in the park. Thanks, Barb. Any other citizen comments this evening? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Um, anybody wants to pull something from the consent agenda to active this evening? Okay, seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to read the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries seven to zero. Meeting minutes of the October 6th work session, October 27th regular meeting, and the November 24th, 2014 regular meeting. Accepting the minutes of the November 18th, 2014 Emergency Medical Services Advisory Board, September 4th and September 18th, 2014 Historic Preservation Commission, and the November 12th, 2014 Youth Advisory Commission. Approving the recommendation from the Emergency Medical Services Advisory Board, to approve the transport license for the Lewiston Fire Department to provide ambulance service. Approving resolution 2014-70 by title only. A resolution declaring various items of municipal property to be surplus, providing for the donation of said surplus pr property and providing an effective date. And approving the vouchers payable dated November 7th, 2014 through November 20th, 2014 in the amount of $1,211,635.30. Okay, counselors, the consent agenda has been read. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as read. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Chair, yeah. I just wanted to comment on uh, last week when we were looking at the vouchers payable. The issue came up regarding the Verizon wireless bill. And we did some research at the request of the council to come back with a breakdown for you all um, as to uh, how that particular bill, which was large for last month, uh, came to be broken down. Um, what we determined was that uh, the operational costs cover a two-month period, uh, which and comes to a little over $12,000. 
uh, the remainder of that, those funds were for the initial purchase of the new equipment uh, and the upgrades to new phones that were part of the uh, new contract with Verizon Wireless. Uh, and that cost, which was around $15,000 or so, uh, is, will be offset in part by credits that Verizon is going to provide to the city in the amount of about $8,500. So I just wanted to put that on the record. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Moving on to the active agenda. Have a resolution 2014-71. It's approving three gift deeds from Modi Park Conservancy to the city of Lewiston. Mr. Barker, would you like to present this to the council? Mayor, councilors, thank you for uh, getting this put on our agenda for today. Um, also, thank you, Gary and Barb, for your words. They pretty much took most of my item history, so you don't have to listen to me speak to that, uh, which was good. Plus, they had a little more visuals than what I was going to provide. Uh, but again, uh, Modi Park Conservancy and the city have been partners for quite some time now, uh, from about 1992 until now. Uh, Conservancy at that point was a very strong group of um, dedicated volunteers in our community that helped with the ongoing routine maintenance and development of the park. Uh, since then, obviously, uh, with most groups, people move on, um, people move uh, and do other things, other projects. So I sat down with uh, Phil Shin and Barb Bush this last year to take a look at uh, where can we move forward with the conservancy and the properties that they have. Uh, one of the parcels that I'm going to talk about is one that uh, the Conservancy had purchased a few years back as part of a trail grant that we had applied for with Idaho Department of Parks and Rec uh, through the Land and Water Conservation Fund. Uh, we weren't able to move forward with that project, but it is something that we are going to continue on our project list as, a, as something that we want to see come to fruition. It's also part of the uh, trans the bicycle and pedestrian master plan. Um, again, I'll show you some pictures in a little bit. Uh, that's one major um, property that we wanted to make sure that was uh, going to stay in the hands of the of the park. Uh, there's two other parcels uh, that the conservancy has owned that are adjacent to other property within the park area. And what we're doing today is we're asking, uh, obviously, for the council to accept the gift deeds uh, at a later date. Uh, probably this winter, we'll clean up a little bit of the books and ask for those three parcels along with Annabelle Osborne's two parcels to become officially part of um, Modi Park. So as far as uh, additional commentary, um, I had mentioned that we met with uh, two representatives. Um, the Conservancy, through that meeting and um, additional discussions, the Conservancy is not planning to go away. Uh, their 501c3 status uh, did go uh, defunct, but they are planning on regaining that, um, getting momentum back again. Um, so anybody that's interested in volunteering, uh, I'm sure um, Phil and Barb would be happy to speak with anybody or the city as well. They can approach us. Uh, but what we're looking at now is a conservancy as far as instead of managing or owning properties, uh, we want to see them partner with us in uh, future development at the site as well as uh, volunteer efforts. Uh, as a park staff, we did put in for additional funding this last year within our park side uh, to increase the maintenance that we would be doing to try and offset some of that that was done by volunteers previously. Uh, just to make sure that we can cover all those bases and make sure everything uh, continues to be maintained well. So what I'll do now, unless you've, you have any immediate questions, is I can go ahead and go into some of the visuals. Um, in your packet, you did receive a, uh, an overhead view 
a GIS map. Um, and I'll kind of point out here, you can't see it too well. Uh, one parcel that we have that I'll be referring to as a heritage block parcel is this parcel right here that goes along Gateway Drive. Uh, it's in a, in a blue shade on your sheet that you have. There's a small parcel here that we'll call the Randall Triangle that's right here. And then our property off of Vineyard Drive uh, that'll be up on the south portion here of where uh, the property is currently. Uh, before I forget, just to give you some size so you kind of have perspective, Heritage Block is about 0.8 acres through here. The Randall Triangle is about 0 0.08 acres. And the vineyard property is just over an acre. So the upper portion, and then it includes the hillside and part of the canyon there. So we'll start up on vineyard. Uh, this is a view of the property, if you're familiar with vineyard, that, as it cuts across um, from pretty much 8th over to 14th. Um, this is the roadway here, so it's a view looking at the property. Obviously, it's a currently a vacant property. There's a house that sits a little bit down below over here and one up above on this side that you'll be able to see in a later view. This is a view standing on the property looking north. Again, uh, shows the home on the west side a little bit closer. This is a view from the west side of the property looking towards the northeast in this direction. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of clearing here. This is a view from the front, the north portion of that upper property. Obviously, you can tell there's quite a bit of drop off that occurs right here. Uh, you can see off in the distance, uh, this is portions of Modi Park down here and part of some property, uh, the Randall Zone there. And this is similar view, but gives you a little bit more idea of this is property off of 13th that's over here. Um, and you can see uh, some of the park as it meanders through here. It's a very linear park. Uh, there's not a whole lot of width to it. Uh, Gary made a point as far as um, not really being suitable for ball fields. I definitely would agree with that, and there would be no intent for us to ever to want to develop that. We have been approached by groups, um, and at one point LCSC did have um, a, an event there, but it got a little too large actually for the space. So we've changed, helped them pick a different location for that. So typically uh, we do have within the park, if you haven't been there, we do have a, a few different uh, small shelters, uh, gathering spots, not ones that we have that are res reservable, and that was intentional as well. Uh, we didn't want them to be major gathering spots. Again, this is more of a nature community type uh, neighborhood area. Uh, this is a view from 13th, um, the circle on 13th, uh, looking towards the northwest. You can see the park and the pathway meandering through here. Uh, Gateway Drive is down here. Um, the Randall Triangle is to the left of that. So this is standing in the same spot, but looking towards the southwest. So the Randall Triangle is a little portion of property right up in here. It's really at the base of where we would begin our um, trail up to the upper property. And just take a couple more looks at the property owned by Conservancy on Gateway. This is a view looking north down Gateway. Right behind me where I'm taking the picture here is the uh, circle. Um, the south part of Gateway along this hillside is owned in part of Modi Park currently. And the property, the uh, 0.8 acres, goes along the east side here. Just another view looking down the street. 
Uh, so we already do have some trees, some drip irrigation, irrigation system that is put in through this hillside here. Um, so it's, uh, it's just to the general person looking um, and entering that street, it looks seamless along there anyway at this time. So uh, this is a view from the north looking south up the street and again the hillside with some uh, trees that have been planted in that area. So with all that, uh, the staff recommendation is, um, is for the council to approve the three gift deeds um, and approve the associated resolution 2014-71. Any questions? Questions? Council Randall. I'd like to make a point that the Randall property has no direct relationship to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for clearing that up. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Okay, Council, I'll, uh, we don't have to read, right, Kerry? It's just a approval of the resolution. Okay, and I'd entertain a motion to approve resolution 2014-71. So Sorry. move. Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Mr. Mayor. Council Randall. I've been up on that property several times and it's a real enjoyable place to uh, sort of get away from the hustle and bustle. It's got a lot of uh, small wildlife, nothing very big, although I've heard, haven't seen, but I've heard of deer wandering through that area and a lot of people enjoy watching them. And it's also accessible from the uh, Veterans Hospital, so if they, if they wanted to, they could probably take advantage of getting down into the park. So, um, and it's easily accessible from the 8th Street to get over to there too. So, uh, and there's a little parking area over there with a bathroom. So. It's a really nice little park, and I really think that the, uh, adding the property on would be beneficial. And I would really like to see us see if we could get the uh, winery declared as a historic site and uh, use that as to, uh, like, maybe to allow the uh, winery, local wineries to exhibit their goods. And uh, so anyway, I thought that would be a good place for us to be. Thank you. I'll just follow up on what Council Randall said. Uh, you know, the first time I went up there, I was amazed. It was just kind of a reception right down there at the old uh, the old house, and it was kind of a, about harvest time and uh, showing off the community garden that was down there, and it was just, you know, quite impressive to see the amount of produce they grew in that area. And, and uh, so thank you for your hard work. and. I do think it's a great addition right in the middle of the city. Any other comments? Okay, all those in favor of approving resolution 2014-71 say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, seven to zero. Okay, next up is vouchers payable to Albertsons, 11-7-14 through 11-20-14, the amount of $166.48. I'll entertain a motion to approve Accounts payable? So moved. Second. With Councilor Daniels abstaining. Got a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, seven to zero. Six zero. Six zero to one with Councilor Daniel abstaining. Thank you. On to unfinished new business. City Councilor comments. Do we have any City Councilor comments this evening? I don't really have any. Okay, well I guess we'll move on to City Manager comments. Mr. Bennett, do you have any? Yes, thank you Mayor, members of the Council. Just some reminders we have um, coming up tomorrow, the Urban Renewal Agency will be meeting at City Hall at noon uh, to review the North Lewiston Road projects. Um, and then the following night, which is the December 10th, Wednesday evening, the Planning and Zoning Commission will begin taking the first action to amend the comprehensive plan 
to make the changes necessary to implement the Area City Impact Agreement. And then lastly, we have uh, this Friday night, of course, is the annual uh, city uh, Christmas uh, function at the Community Center. And oh, at the Elks, I'm sorry, you're right, it's at the Elks this year, uh, which is a very nice venue for the uh, event. Um, tickets have been going briskly. If uh, any of you had intended to uh, attend and uh, haven't got your tickets yet, please see Carrie uh, by tomorrow morning at 11. And if there are any city employees that are watching or listening tonight, I would encourage them to do the same if they haven't already picked up their tickets. So okay. that's it. Thank you, sir. Advisory Board and Commission appointments, do we have any this evening? We're still looking for members for the Solid Waste Advisory Commission. I noticed yeah. that they had to scratch the meeting because they didn't have a quorum. Yeah. So if anybody's interested in being on the Solid Waste Advisory Commission, I uh, encourage you to contact Kerry at City Hall. Any others? Okay. Work session agenda topics, do we have any on anybody's radar for January? What do we have for January to refresh our memories? We have an update on the utility billing um, and we have a mutual aid contract um, with fire. We have an update from Mr. Davies on the um, stinker station issue. And we will also likely have a um, um, discussion of, of a proposal from the Port of Whitman to extend uh, dark fiber into Lewiston. Uh, we've been working with them to uh, put together an agreement that would allow them to use the city's rights of way uh, in order to extend that uh, all the way through uh, the city, uh, which would be a, a big benefit to not only the city government, but to, but to the business community as well. So we'll talk about that. Okay. Okay, well that concludes our meeting i'll entertain a motion to go into executive session re personnel under idaho code section 67-2345 in paren one paren b so moved second we have a motion a second is there any discussion all those in favor say aye aye aye, aye. 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 opposed motion carries we will not be taking any action after the executive session thank you everybody for watching this meeting's not...